Dr. Glenn Cahoon works with young people in the Horofenua. Here he shares his insights for parents and caregivers about having difficult conversations. Broaden out what your idea of listening is. It's not necessarily two heads in a room. Not all listening has to be sitting across. Sometimes it's texting. Sometimes there's been massive moves forward by emailing with young people, or much less threatening. So I don't always think listening has to be traditional listening. Using technology in that sense, using it, but always at a human being at the end of technology, you know, and not a substitute for the human interaction. And sometimes it's group situations. It's actually cooking alongside a young person, doing a driving lesson alongside a young person, driving them up for a dental appointment. It's a lot less threatening to walk beside somebody. People think, oh, you're just talking about the weather, but it's still two consciousnesses. And you can feel tenderness even when you're talking about the weather and regard and interest. So broadening out your idea of what the consultation is and having a number of different responses to it. But just keep trying. Move arms and legs. I worry when kids aren't moving arms and legs. Even. Go for walks. Just meet them on their terms. Keep trying. Change the point of focus. Ask for help. Go talk to places where, you know, there's lots of really good therapists and people that will help you and say, this is what you can do, you know, try this, be humble. They're gone so quick, you know, they piss off and leave you, you know, put you in the rest home. <laughs>
it's not just a medicine for the person being listened to, it's a huge medicine for the person doing the listening. It's a simple medicine, it's an old medicine, and it's a medicine we can all practice. And plus, you find shit out. <laughs> it makes it easier to figure out what to do next. Lots of times we see kids here that parents bring them in because parents are worried about them. Teachers bring them in because teachers are worried. The law brings them in because the law's worried, but the kid's not worried. So you're not really gonna get a long way. And I think a lot of times things break down because the timing's not right. Sometimes you just gotta wait for years for them to come back online, but maintain the relationship. Do other things, let them know you like them. Send them birthday cards. Send them a text. When you're not talking to them, you're talking to them. The primary care model is don't come and see me unless you've got a problem. Whereas the model of how you're going, what are you up to, there's a lot more prevention in that. It's what you would do for your nephew and niece. It's like, shit, how are you doing, man? Haven't heard from you for ages. Sometimes like, oh, I'm really awesome, I'm off doing this now. Or, oh, things are still bad, and shall we talk about it? Because sometimes you just, at 17, it's just not gonna, you're not gonna clean your room, you know? It's just not gonna happen. I'll just come back at 22, and it's like, oh shit, you're already cleaning your room. So I think talking is about, and listening is about, as long as they're safe, and as long as they know they're cared about, and that there's a path, then sometimes you just live to fight another day. That's what I would tell parents too, is, is sometimes let it breathe a bit. I guess our school ground used to be full of negative voices to us, but for young people now it's the, it's the whole world, you know? How many likes, how many people don't like you? I think the same things are there, but they're multiplied by social media. But there's also lots of protective things in social media. People can talk about things they carry on their own with other people who carry things on their own, and they can find safety in that. Other people who think like them, feel like them. So it's also protective. Some of those things will be developmental for a period of time as they go through adolescence, which is quite a revolutionary time in your life. It's a huge amount of things change. Going from being a child to an adult, you're managing a much more complex world. You're driving, you're drink, you've got attitudes to drugs, alcohol, sexuality, employment. You double in size. There's a massive number of changes. Your brain is completely rewired. Some of those unhappinesses will come from that developmental change. Others will come from early indicators of ongoing mental health difficulties. Some will be organic, some will be biological. Some of them will be socially determined by growing up with adverse childhood events, horrible things happen to you, post-traumatic stress. What I have to remember is that heaps of young people are amazing and doing great. They're figuring it out and they're broader-minded, they're smarter, They've got more information at their fingertips. They care more about the planet. <laughs> they kick our ass, they're more honest. But the big thing I wanna say is that it's important to listen because they're telling us about us. Because they're telling us about our country and how it's going to be. So it's important for us so that we know what to do <laughs> for ourselves and how to respond. And if they're saying there's sorrow, there's too much sorrow in some places, then we need to listen to that, because that's not the country we want. It makes us human to listen. Life is short. It helps us to appreciate who we are. It defines us, it makes us humble, it makes us gentle and tender. And all we have sometimes is to cling to each other. And that's about all the meaning there is to it. Mm -hmm.